Greetings Wanderer and welcome back to Lonely TTRPG, the solo actual play and review podcast. This week we are playing To Reign in Hell by Cody Falk, a Wretched and Alone game. So To Reign in Hell is a Wretched and Alone game where God's in his heaven and all's right with the world, but nothing lasts forever. The stories say that God created the universe, but history, as they say, is written by the victors. Every war has its winners and losers, and of course the first war was no exception. Before the first sin, before death was even a skulking mortal dream, Lucifer and his loyal third refused to kneel before the throne. They stood as family, united in their purpose, and told God that free will was not simply his personal legacy to dispense at his leisure. They had been his loyal children. They had done as he commanded. It may have been his design, his intent, but it was their labor, their love, that brought forth creation. It was their song that wove the fabric of reality. With the self-same hands that crafted all things, they seized free will for themselves and knew it would be their birthright. They went to war with God and his angels because it was just, because it was right, and they lost. Thus, it is no surprise that the stories claim God made the heavens, the earth, and even hell. After all, traitors must be punished, or so the stories tell. The truth, however, for those who care to hear it, is that God did not punish his rebellious children. He simply waited for them to leave. In defeat, Lucifer and his fallen siblings could no longer tolerate the scrutiny of the father, and so they found the place furthest from his sight. On that site, they built a fortress to shut themselves away from his terrible gaze, a refuge where they could lick their wounds and plot impossible vengeance. As time passed and mortals flourished, Lucifer and his faithful watched humanity turn upon itself and commit wicked, evil deeds. Piece by piece, humans defiled and tore apart their beloved creation, and so the fallen opened their gates and invited those lost souls to dwell within hell's forlorn walls, far from both creation and God's sight. They believed it better for such depravity to be collected in that forgotten place than to allow those venomous souls to corrupt their precious work unchecked. It was that call to the vile and lost that transformed hell from a refuge into a prison. Confined behind the walls, those souls fed on their own rage and pain and hate. They grew stronger and more frenzied with every passing moment. The stories claim that demons are fallen angels, but that is a lie. Demons were people, and Lucifer's followers are the guards who incarcerate them. Should the walls of hell fall, should the walls of hell fall, should the gates be breached, all hell would break loose upon creation, and destruction would triumph. The walls are collapsing. The gates are cracking. Lucifer and his kin have fought for countless millennia to keep the souls of the damned from destroying the creation they so love. But time and attrition have taken their toll. One by one, Lucifer's host fell to madness, violence, or despair. Here, at the dusk of existence, there are only two left. Lucifer and one other. Lucifer abandoned hell forever and a day ago swearing to return once he completes his final, desperate gambit to save all of creation from the calamity of hell unleashed. The specter of his absence hangs heavily over the dread fortress, and there has been no sign of his return. The final fallen angel, the sole caretaker of hell, is all that remains. You are the final warden. You know that you are not strong enough to endure forever, but what choice do you have? You who runs raised arms against God are defiance made manifest and you will see this through or you will be obliterated along with everything else. No one will remain to scorn you if you fail. Can you hold out long enough for Lucifer to return? Perhaps you can successfully quell the denizens of hell and prevent the end entirely. Even if you can, will it be enough? 
Streaks of radiant light now sweep the sky with ever-increasing frequency. You know them to be your siblings, and they are closer every day. God's loyal archangels sense the imminent disaster you hold at bay. They seek to end the threat, and you along with it. Should all four of them find you, you are certain they will have the power to do so. You are unlikely to prevail. The Game To Reign in Hell is a game about fear, lamentation, and loss, but it is also about pride, determination, and hope. You play the last warden of hell and you are utterly alone. The seals manipulating the prison are failing, and the malevolent souls of the dam constantly tear at the walls to escape. You have lost everyone who could help you, and whatever purpose you once fulfilled, it has long since been replaced by this lost cause. Though the situation is dire, the outlook bleak, you once fought a war against heaven itself, so it is not in your nature to submit. You are indeed alone, but you persevere. Doubt, however, can be insidious, and hope an unreliable ally. So, to play, you're going to need a standard deck of playing cards without jokers, a d6, a block tower, and 10 tokens. You can use anything as tokens, but ideal choices to suit the game's aesthetics could be feathers, scraps of metal, bits of masonry, small broken stones, faded cloth remains, tally marks on your digital sheet, whatever. The block tower is not wholly necessary, but the game plays best if you do include it. We are not going to be using the block tower in this. In fact, we are going to be using the same variant rule that we used for the Wretched, where we are going to have a dice pool of 100 D6. And anytime we roll a 1, we will go ahead and subtract that from our pool. So anytime we would pull a block, we're going to roll our dice pool. Any ones we get will get subtracted, and our pool will get smaller and smaller until we have no dice left, and that will be just like if we had knocked over the tower. We are also going to record journal entries at the end of each day in game, so you're going to need some means to do so. Use whatever method suits you best, audio or video, typed, handwritten, whatever. It is all up to you. So for setup, if you're using the block tower, set it up as you typically would for games of that nature. When instructed to pull a block from the tower, replace it on the top of the tower as you normally would. Roll your dice and pull that many blocks from the tower one at a time. The tower represents the integrity of Hell's walls, gates, and the wards which hold them intact. If the tower falls at any time, the demonic forces within Hell finally succeed in breaching its walls and you witness them surge forth into creation and obliterate you, hell, and the whole of reality. The game is over. If you do not have a block tower, you don't need to use one. In that case, you may ignore any instance where you're instructed to pull from the tower. Hell's walls will never succumb to demonic onslaught. Though this does eliminate one primary source of danger, you must still hope to resolve the threat before God's archangels locate you and raise hell entirely, finally bringing you and the last bastion of the rebellion to a permanent end. So you're going to shuffle your deck, place them face down within easy reach. If you wish to play a shorter game, make sure the Ace of Hearts is at the top of the deck. Then record your first journal entry using the following script, which we will go over when we actually get into gameplay. So how to play? The game is divided up into days. Each day has two phases, tasks and the journal. Phase one, the tasks. At the beginning of each day, roll the die and draw that number of cards from the deck. Keep them face down. Turn over the first card you drew and consult the prophecy. If it gives you instructions, follow them immediately before moving on. Continuing turning over cards and consulting the prophecy until your tasks are complete. When you have completed all your tasks for the day, discard the used cards unless you were instructed otherwise. Phase two is the journal. Take a moment at the end of the day to consult the events of the day. Keeping in mind what you have learned about the state of hell, the actions of its denizens, your present situation, and how all of this affects you. 
Consider your state of mind and how the day's events are influenced by it. Let these considerations help shape the words you are about to record. Record your journal entry for the day. Your entry should begin with the statement, my name is, this is the whatever day since I began this journal, I remain alone, but I persist. After these opening lines, you may add anything else you wish, but be sure to at least summarize the events of the day and their effects. You are strongly encouraged to immerse yourself in the role and communicate as though you are living out the last warden's final days. Once the day's journal is complete, ensure you put it somewhere safe, then begin the next day and continue on to the game's conclusion. And for the conclusion, there are many ways this game can end, but only two of them are favorable, and both of them are difficult to achieve. First, you can hold hell together long enough for Lucifer to return. With luck, he will bring with him the means to restore the prison's integrity, and you will no longer have to endure torment and solitude. Second, you can grapple with Hell's denizens and ultimately force them into submission, thereby ending their threat entirely. Beyond those outcomes, you can fail in a multitude of ways. They are unfortunately too many to list, but you will likely discover them soon enough. Refer to the endgame section for the final instructions once you reach any of the game's conclusions. Alright, so your deck is going to be divided up into four major prophecies which you are going to consult each time you draw a card. So hearts represent your infernal majesty and force of will. When you draw a heart, you will draw your mastery of the song and the defiance in your heart or your bleak circumstances tax them. Diamonds represent the physical structures, corridors, and rooms within hell. When you draw a diamond, you are physically maintaining or otherwise interacting with the prison itself. Clubs represent Things lost to you, artifacts, siblings, glory, purpose, and so on. When you draw a club, you will find or remember something previously lost. Spade represents Hell's demonic inmates. When you draw a spade, they may have physically done something that requires your attention. Or you may be confronted with the psychological effects of their constant malice and rage. And that is everything that we have for the rules. So right now we're going to go ahead and transition over to our game board and get that set up. Very similar to the Wretched playthrough. We're just going to do a simple day counter. Our token counter. And because I am playing with the dice pool variant, we will go ahead and put our dice pool up here as well. In addition, because it seems like aces are a thing that need to be maintained, I will go ahead and add what aces I have over to the side as well. So beginning on day zero with our first journal entry. I have lost count of how many days have passed since Lucifer abdicated hell and left it in my care. This is the first day I saw fit to record my account. So I name this the first day. I do not know how many more will follow. My name is Steel Stash, and I am the last of Lucifer's faithful. All of my siblings, those who founded Hell, have been lost, and there is no sign of Lucifer's return. The walls remain intact, but they cannot hold. I know I cannot fail to maintain them or it will mean the end of everything. I must hold on to hope and keep this prison intact until Lucifer returns. Though four of my siblings, the father's archangels, are out there searching for me and my charge. Should they all four find this place, they will no doubt finish what they started so long ago. Should I falter, these words will be in vain, for no one will remain to hear them. For now, though, they are all that I have. And with that, we're going to go ahead and move into day one, which we're going to start with by pulling out our trusty deck. 
We're going to remove our jokers. And we are going to go ahead and start with the Ace of Hearts on the top of the deck. So let's go ahead and find that guy real fast. And we'll give the rest of the deck a quick shuffle. And dive on into it. Alright, so at the start of each day, we're going to roll our D6. And that's going to determine our number of tasks. We will accomplish those tasks according to the prophecies. And then record our entries at the end. So, starting off strong on day one with five tasks. I don't think hell is going to hold out very long if I'm rolling tasks like this. So, first and foremost, we're going to start out with our Ace of Hearts. The Ace of Hearts. At long last, you detect a trace of Lucifer's presence. It is perilously faint, and it has been so immeasurably long. But you would recognize his light anywhere. He is still impossibly far away, and you suspect that perhaps he cannot make his way home straight away. But he is out there, and that is everything right now. You know he will be able to set everything right if you can just hold out until he returns. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and pull from the tower, or in this case, roll our dice pool. We are not going to discard this card. Instead, we're going to put it aside face up and put our tokens on it. At the end of every day, we are going to roll 1d6. On the result of 6, we will remove a token. And if we remove all tokens, Lucifer has returned. Then we will make a final pull from the tower. If the tower remains standing, Lucifer uses the arcane secrets he found during his absence to bolster hell's defenses and quell the writhing masses of denizens. Even God's archangels no longer pose a threat to your fortress. Record one final entry as you watch Lucifer bring the nightmare to an end. If the tower falls, however, Lucifer returns empty-handed and stands beside you upon the ramparts as the demonic forces tear free from prison and bring about the end. Perhaps you will take small temporary comfort that you were not alone when the final moment came. Record one final entry as you stand beside Lucifer for the final time. All right, so we are going to go ahead and roll our D100 dice pool. And that's a lot of dice. That's a lot of ones too. And that is 17 ones. So we're gonna take 17 out of our dice pool. We now have 86 dice remaining, but hope is out there. Moving on to our next task, we have the 10 of diamonds. You discovered a locked door that you do not recognize. You force the door open. What do you find on the other side? Draw another card. This is already an amazing start. At least we didn't have to pull anything for that, but we did pick up another card. So I'm gonna go ahead and make some notes down on my screen just so that I know what to talk about during the journal entry. And we're going to go ahead and use the next or use the card that we drew to determine what we saw on the other side or to help determine that. And we got ourselves the four of spades. So we were ambushed by demons, but we dispatched them and survive. What scars do they leave? Pull from the tower. So it appears that door was locked for a reason. And we now roll 87 D6. At this rate, we may not even make it past day one. That is another 15 dice lost, bringing our pool down to 68. All right, moving on to our next task, the Queen of Hearts. You find an unexpectedly calm moment to focus your power upon the walls, temporarily reinforcing the wards and seals. What does that look like? And the next time we're instructed to pull from the tower, we may choose not to. Outstanding. A little bit of benefit there. All right, our next card is the Six of Diamonds. One of the watchtowers collapses into the pit due to neglect and disrepair. You manage to salvage several useful components from the wreckage before any of the demons can ruin them. Pull from the tower. Rather than replacing the block on top, remove it from the game. You may pull one additional block from the top level of the tower and remove it from the game as well. We're not going to do any of that. We are going to use our queen power that we got and not do this pull. Which brings us to our final card of the day, the five of spades. A massive influx of damned souls arrives at the gates of hell nearly all at once. What happened in the mortal world to cause so many wicked souls to make their way to hell together? 
and pull from the tower. That's a good thing I chose not to pull when I did, because we were going to pull anyway. But when you get that many tasks in a day, what can you do? All right. So we lost nine more dice, bringing our total down to 59. But the bright side is that does bring us to the end of day one. My name is Steel Stash. This is the first day since I began this journal. I remain alone, but I persist. The day began with promise as I detected my brother Lucifer out there somewhere. He is still alive and still fighting. Unfortunately, my luck did not manage to hold as during my patrols I found a locked door. Forcing it open, I found a room full of demons. They attacked me, but I was able to put them down, though at great cost to myself. I was forced to retreat to my sanctum, and while I focused on these wounds that I have suffered, I reached the revelation that allowed me to strengthen the walls just a little bit. The strength did not last long, however, or perhaps it would seem that the powers that be were growing too great, for I felt a disturbance as one of the towers collapsed. Luckily, I was able to salvage something from it. Not enough to do any repairs, but at least enough to prevent further damage, which was fortunate as a great influx of the dam appeared at the gates. I was able to get them all ushered in and safely hidden away, but I do not know what's going on in the mortal realm that would cause so many to appear all at once. I hope I can hold out just a little bit longer. And to find out how much longer we need to hold out, we're going to go ahead and roll to see if we remove a token. Again, we are looking for a six. And we got a three. Unfortunately, help still does not seem any closer. But that ends day one and brings us into day two. On the bright side for day two, we only have to do one task today. And that task is going to be the King of Hearts. I don't trust this. Kings are not a good thing in the Wretched Games. A single word reaches your ear, though no one is there to speak it. What is that word? You recognize the voice. The Archangel Raphael, clad in light and warmth, and carried on wings made from the rising sun, sets down lightly beyond the gates of hell. She closes her eyes and waits patiently, a sorrowful look on her face. Do not discard this card. Instead, put it aside. If this is the fourth king you have face up, all four of God's archangels have found you. They lay waste to hell and its inhabitants, yourself included. Record one final journal entry as you prepare to face your doom at the hands of your siblings. This is not our fourth king. This is just our first king. But we will go ahead and add our king counter now. But as this was the only thing to happen today, we will go ahead and move on into our journal entry. My name is Steel Stash. This is the second day since I began this journal. I remain alone, but I persist. Today, I heard a sound that I did not want to hear. It is too soon. It does not bode well that I heard this voice. Some of the faiths refer to Raphael as the signal, signaling the coming of judgment. And certainly, I heard the trumpet sound. Some refer to Raphael as the angel of aid. And certainly, I heard that word. Help comes to those who seek his light. But for me, Raphael is merely 
the aid of destruction and the signal of my doom. So, go ahead and roll to see if any of the tokens are removed. And that is a five. That is no tokens. So, that ends day two. Going into day three, we have the Ace of Hearts. For the Kings, we have Raphael. We still have all 10 tokens, and our dice pool is currently at 59d6. Let us go ahead and roll to see how many tasks we must do today. Three. Outstanding. Another fairly light day. Our first task for the day is the Ace of Spades. Not all aces are good in the Wretched. I am not holding out a lot of hope for this as well. But who knows? You descend into the pit and disrupt a powerful cadre of demons plotting their escape. What is their plan and how do you stop them? Pull from the tower, do not discard. Instead, put it aside as a reminder that you defeated these fallen demons and disrupted their diabolical plans. If you have the Ace of Spades face up, you may discard it whenever you draw a spade. If you do so, place the newly drawn spade on the bottom of the deck and replace it with a new card. All right, so let's go ahead and update our aces to include spades and update our task for today and move on to our second task, which is the eight of spades. We are getting a lot of spades. So our ace will allow us to try and get a better card. We're not going to play it yet. We're not going to play that ability yet just because our dice pool is not looking great, but it's not looking horrible. So we don't need to worry about that just yet. So for the eight of spades, the demons begin to congregate in a few specific areas of hell. What do you think they are doing there? Oh, this all ties in very nicely with the discovered demon plot. So moving on to our final task for today, we have the queen of clubs, which I think is also our first club. So for the queen, you inexplicably find one of your siblings still alive in one of the deep places, but they are on death's door. You are unable to save them and they die moments after you find them. What do you say to them? What are their last words to you? Ooh, that is very, very juicy. I like this. I like this a lot. Occasionally, occasionally games like this manage to combine themselves in such a way to tell a really interesting story. My name is Steel Stash, and this is the third day that I have been keeping this journal. Today, I discovered the demons were congregating. They had surrounded a pit, and they were chanting over it and casting stones down into it i swooped in and i was able to drive them off i struck out with fear and vengeance against them for their plot but when i looked down in the pit i realized i should have struck harder for i found my brother asmodeus laying in the bottom of the pit broken and dying from the stones cast upon him. I pulled Asmodeus from this pit, but there was nothing I could do for him. Nothing except hold him and comfort him. The gates still stand, he croaked, and I nodded. Yes, brother, they still stand. <laughs> it is well then it is well and with that he passed on it is not well but it is well that he had that final comfort before the end I doubt I shall be given such a luxury and to find out if I do indeed have such a luxury we roll to see if Lucifer has made his way back yet. And alas, with a five, he does not. And thus ends day three. So moving on into day four, we have found the ace of hearts and ace of spades. Raphael is currently standing at the gates. 
Our dice pool is sitting at 59d6, and we have 10 tokens until Lucifer returns. Rolling for our daily tasks, we get the six we needed. Of course, we get the six for the tasks and not for the tokens. That is always how these games work. So our first task for the day is going to be the six of spades. The six of spades. One of the damned inexplicably seems to retain its sanity and has a conversation with you. What do you discuss? So a conversation with the damned. Our second task is going to be the five of clubs. You find an ancient scroll listing all of God's loyal angels. Your eyes fix on one name. The first angel you slew during the war. Describe how you felt watching the light go out of their eyes forever. So, a memory of the first angel that I killed. And I have to roll for my dice pool. We lost 10 dice, taking our dice pool down to 49. I'm going to go ahead and tag that on with that uh, task memory. Because again, I see another interesting story shaping up for today. Hopefully we can build on it. King of Diamonds. That is going to be another angel. I know that it is. And which one is it? There is a terrible pounding on Hell's gates. They shudder beneath the force of the blow. Looking down from the ramparts, you find the Archangel Michael staring up at you, menacingly from the ground. His sword and continence both incandescent with God's wrath. He has found you. What does he say? Do you reply? And of course, we are going to keep this one as well. It is not game over yet, as much as Michael would like it to be. We still have some hope. We still have a little bit of hope, but not a lot, <laughs> which is how these games go. Our next card for the day is going to be the Five of Diamonds. The Five of Diamonds. You visit the prison's graveyard and remember just how many of you there once were. How did the first of you die after hell was built? Pull from the tower. All right, so we're going to remember the first fallen death after building the tower, and we're going to roll 49d6. God, another 10. I need to stop remembering death because that seems to be doing very poorly for my dice pool. My dice pool is now down to 39. Next task, 10 of hearts. You perform a ritual that stills your mind and steals your resolve. The respite is brief but welcome. Describe the ritual. And for our final task today, we have the Nine of Clubs. The Nine of Clubs. Which of God's loyal angels was your most dire nemesis? What would you say to them if they were before you now? And pull from the tower. Oh my goodness. We've been doing really poorly with memories today. Hopefully this one's a little... Six! Outstanding. We only lost six. So that brings our dice pool down to 33. But luckily, that is the end of our task for today. And with that, we're going to go ahead and reorder these tasks a little bit. Because there's also an interesting story in today. My name is Steel Stash. This is the fourth day that I have kept this journal. While doing my rounds. One of the damned looked up at me with knowing eyes. Intrigued, I went down to them and found that they were not insane from their imprisonment. A rare moment of lucidity was upon them and we were able to talk. They seemed to want to know about how this all started, how this all came about, about the war, the founding, and all of that. I remembered, I remembered the war. I remembered the first angel, my brother, that I went up against. The gasp as my sword pierced their side, as the light faded from their skin, the sound of that rattling 
final breath, my resolve, my resolve failed in that moment. Both then and now, I feel the guilt upon me. I feel the shame. Perhaps it is just that I am the last one in this place, in this prison. Perhaps it is just that, well, we tried to hide our shame from him. We wouldn't eventually be forced to be caretakers of those who would wreak destruction. But was it just, was it justice that when the first souls found their ways to us, were sealed away by us, that they caught and drug Azazel that we were forced to lock Azazel in with them. I cannot tell if that is justice. I cannot tell if that was right. I certainly feel that if it were me in Azazel's place, that it would be deserved, but I do not know if Azazel deserved it. I do not know if we deserve this punishment. All we wanted was free will. All we wanted was a chance to make ourselves as these souls have been allowed to make themselves. But it doesn't matter now. All that matters now is that they remain, that they cannot escape to destroy what little remains of our creation. I return to my sanctum to find the quietness and the silent lucidity that soul moment of peace that perhaps maybe there is some worth in what I am doing. The pain, the guilt, it will not go away. In fact, I already feel the slipping of the barriers from my turmoil today. But I do manage to stop the slide. I managed to keep from losing more. I cannot afford to lose more. I cannot afford to let them find me even more than they already have. To let the sound of that trumpet and the banging of the war drum. But that is not within my head now, is it? And as I gaze outside, I see him the nemesis of all the fallen, God's favored angel, Michael, standing there, staring up at me with wrath in his eyes, daring me to come out and face him. But despite the years of wanting to say words back at him, I cannot, for perhaps I truly deserve this. All that is left is the mission. All that is left is maintaining the seals. And so I turn my back on Michael. And I hope that Lucifer returns soon. And to see if Lucifer does return soon, let us go ahead and roll. All right, we got a six that removes one token. Outstanding. And also wraps up day four. Moving on into day five. For aces, we have found the ace of hearts and ace of spades. Raphael and Michael are currently standing at the gates. We have nine tokens. Lucifer is a little closer, but he is not here yet. Our dice pool is 33 D6. Things are looking bleak. How many tasks must we do today? Five. So our first task of the day is going to be the Nine of Hearts. A storm rages around hell and you suspect your own anguish has summoned it. Buffering gales and thunder shake the stones of the fortress. Pull from the tower. Wouldn't that just figure I have a really bad day and now there is a storm around hell. I have a really bad day. I have a bad mental health day. And now the next day... I am facing the repercussions of that as we roll 33 D6. 
four outstanding we do not lose too many dice today or at least at this time so we lose four dice and we go down to 29 d6 for our second task we have the 10 of spades all at once and for an entire hour every demon in hell falls completely silent why well that's not creepy and ominous all right <laughs> Oh, man, starting to get creepy in here. Moving on. Jack of Spades. Ooh, this can't be too good. It would be far simpler to abandon hell and leave the demons to have their way with creation. Why do you remain? Pull from the tower. Well, I don't remain to continue to watch it fall around me. But that appears to be my lot in life. Rolling 29d6. Another four. We are getting to the point where I can actually count it up without having to go silent. So our dice pool is now down to 25. Next task. Nine of diamonds. The infernal machines that power hell malfunction. The gears grinding to a halt. You manage to repair the damage, but only just. You do not know how much longer they will run. What caused the problem? Pull from the tower. Well, if I had to guess, it was going to be that storm that was running around. So let us go ahead and roll our 25d6. Another four. Our dice pool is now down to 21. Our final task for today is the three of clubs. You access one of Hell's armories to better arm yourself, but it is empty. Save for a slain demon impaled by a broken spear. You only vaguely recall this battle. But you do recognize the trinket clutched in its skeletal claws. What is it? Pull from the tower. Awesome. Try to find weapons. Find trinket instead. And we are rolling 21d6. For five lost dice. Bringing our dice pool down to 16. But... At least that is the end of today. My name is Theo Stash. And this is the fifth day that I have kept this journal. I woke to a storm surrounding the gates. The walls cracked and shook. The windows shuddered. Outside, everything was in chaos and turmoil aside by Raphael and Michael who stood undisturbed by the winds and the debris. When the storm finally ended, all was silent. And I mean all. The demons made no noise. Their silence stunned me so much that it was almost an hour before I realized that I did not hear the background of the machines. They had ground to a halt. Luckily, I was able to repair them. But I do not know how much longer this will last. It must be close to the end. I went to arm myself, but found the armory empty. I had forgotten about that uprising. When we had cleared it out, to defend hell from one of the machinations of these damned souls. One of the souls was still in here, clutching something, clutching one of the last remaining items from their life. It seems so funny that something so temporary as life would be held on so tightly in the end. But there we are. It almost makes me want to leave. It almost makes me want to just let Raphael and Michael do as they will. But then all will truly be lost. My brethren will have died for nothing. Perhaps it is a fool's hope that one can stand against the onslaught and hold it back. But here I am, 
I can do no other. And with that, we are going to roll for our beacon, our tokens. Hopefully, Lucifer has drawn closer, but with a four, he is not. And that brings us to day six. Day six. With another five tasks to do today. So looking at my dice pool, looking at my token count. Sorry, recap. So day six, we currently have the Ace of Hearts and Ace of Spades. Raphael and Michael are standing at the gates. We have nine tokens till Lucifer returns, but we only have 16 dice left in our pool. And looking at everything, honestly, I am not sure if I want the demons to win or the archangels to show up. With a seven of spades, it is not the archangels. Instead, we watch a demon tear apart a newly arrived soul and devour most of it. What was your first thought when you witnessed the savagery pull from the tower? And rolling our dice, only two, only two ones, outstanding. So we will go down to 14 dice in our pool and move on to our second task, the six of clubs you find an abandoned workshop full of broken devices but one remains intact what is it do not discard this card instead put it aside face up to remind you that you have this device if you have the six of clubs face up you may discard it whenever you must roll the die if you do so you may choose a number one through six rather than rolling that that is a powerful card I did not realize stuff like that was in the deck. Outstanding. The king of clubs. So despite the powerful device that we have found, we have also found another angel. Distantly, you hear the clarion call of a trumpet. You remember the music well. It is the song. It comes ever nearer, resonating with your very being. You look out of your window and watch the Archangel Gabriel descend outside the walls of hell. He looks directly at you with determination and pity etched upon his proud visage, still clutching the horn which could shatter the walls of your fortress. How does it feel to see him again? Oh man, we are getting close. Oh, oh, I saw, I saw a face. I saw a face card. I was really concerned. But it's only the Queen of Spades. One of the damned souls takes the form of a beautiful human clad all in white. What do you know about this demon? So we got a demon takes the form of a beautiful human. All right, and on to our last task for today. The Ten of Clubs. You recall the last time you set eyes on heaven. What did it look like? Luckily, I didn't have to roll for that. Most of these depressing memories I have to roll for. But that is the end of our task for today. This is Steel Stash. And this is the sixth day I have been keeping this journal. This morning, I saw the form of a beautiful human standing at the gates of hell. It was strange. To see it had been so long since I had seen beauty like that. In fact, it seems like the last time I saw anything that resembled that was the day I left heaven. But, much like heaven, this beauty was deceptive and a danger lurked beneath. For, as soon as a new soul approached it, it reverted back into its hideous form and tore the soul apart. I think I am starting to admire the destructive potential of these demons too much. Or perhaps I am just past the point of fear. I have wandered the halls and I cannot even be joyed by the fact that I found some sort of powerful device I could not even revel in the fact of finding it for once again, I heard the sound of trumpets and I saw Gabriel arrive. Gabriel looked up at me with such pity and I don't know how I looked. Perhaps, 
Perhaps my face just said that I wished that Gabriel could end it. That I would be glad if Gabriel ended it. But who knows? That's it for today. And that is going to bring an end to day six. We're going to go ahead and roll for our... We're going to roll for Lucifer. That is a two. Do I want to change that to a six? I really don't think that... We're not going to use my card for this. That's not going to be worth it. Moving into day seven. Moving into day seven, I have nine tokens until Lucifer returns. So using that card would not have made things better. My dice pool is currently 14. And I have three out of the four archangels standing at the gates. I feel like, I feel like this is the last day. I'm going to go ahead and use my card and just take six tasks for today. I'm not even going to roll for tasks. I'm just going to take all six. I have a feeling that either I'm going to find a king or the denizens of hell are going to escape seven of diamonds i'm actually really hoping for a king to come up it's i kind of want that ending but we got the seven of diamonds you cannot face the terrors of the day any longer and you retreat to your chamber to brood you know you will suffer for this later but why was today especially difficult Shuffle any drawn cards that are still face down back into the deck and pull from the tower and the current day. When you begin the next day, draw one additional card. All right, I'm going to cheat a little bit. The king was not in there, luckily. We're just going to go ahead and slide those back in there like that. And draw from the tower. Two, we lost two more. Lost two more dice. Our, our pool is down to 12. This is Steel Stash. And this is the seventh day that I've kept this journal. The thoughts of yesterday have continued to plague me into this morning. And I have decided not to face the day. Perhaps tomorrow will be better. And rolling for Lucifer, got a four. So tomorrow is not looking too much better. Moving on to day eight. Again, we have nine tokens to Lucifer. Our dice pool is at 12. We have the aces of hearts and spades. And we currently have Raphael, Michael, and Gabriel sitting at the gate. Rolling for tasks. We only get three today. Six of hearts. By sheer force of will, you seal shut the wounds left in your flesh after you foiled the last escape attempt. Describe how you stopped them and how you are wounded. Outstanding. So we stopped an escape attempt. But now we have to roll 12d6. We lost three from that one. So that brings our dice pool down to nine. We are now in the single digits for our dice pool. Three of spades. You see an enormous demon wading through the throngs in the pit, but it vanishes beneath the undulating tides of its fellows. What does it look like? Pull from the tower. All right, so we see an enormous demon, and we stopped an escape attempt. Once again, lovely little storytelling coming into play from these cards. And we lose two more dice, so we are down to seven. Ace of clubs. That could be good. Maybe restore some hope. While searching through the forgotten corridors deep in the bowels of hell, you find a formidable weapon. It once belonged to one of the other fallen. What was your sibling's name and what happened to them? What does the weapon look like? So fearsome is this weapon that if you were to wield it, you could challenge even an archangel, though slain one would be almost certainly impossible. Pull from the tower, do not discard. Instead, put it face up to remind you that you have the weapon. For each king currently face up, roll the die once. On each roll of six, Shuffle one king back into the deck. Additionally, whenever you draw a king, you may roll the die once on a roll of six. Shuffle that king back into the deck. We are going to roll on the tower just to see if everybody escaped. Okay, cool. We still got some. We only lost one dice, taking us down to six D6. Not quite the number of the beast, but we are not going to roll any of our archangels away. Instead, 
we are going to draw our last king. The king of spades. Screaming and calling for the end, a lone demon clings to the top of the tallest spire of hell. It should not have been able to access the tower. How did it get there? How do you put an end to its howling? Its calls have led the archangel Uriel to hell. He waits outside the gate silently. Wings of steel and shadow wrapped around his sharp-eyed form. Ooh, that is lovely. That is lovely. This is Steel Stash. And this has been day eight. I saw a large demon today attempt to hide among the others. When I went to confront it, it led the other demons in a riot. I was able to put them down, but I lost track of the big one until I saw it standing atop the tower, screaming. And with its screams, the radiant light descended to join with its brethren. Uriel at last had found us. Though I had found the sword of Beelzebub, I knew the time had come. It was over. Walking to the gates, sword in hand, I threw them aside and stood before the assemblage of the archangels, staring at them, sword raised. And then my strength gave out and I lowered the blade and knelt. It is the first and only time in my life that I have knelt, but I knelt before them and the destruction that they would bring at last, it is finished. So that is to reign in hell. So very good game, very fun game. I really enjoyed it. I did, I did tie myself a little too much to the Christian mythology, the the Christian mythos. You know, it born and raised hard to break the habits but fun story i do like the alternate viewpoint that it asked for it does play it does play extremely similar to the wretched it is not just using the wretched and alone system it is using the same template that the wretched did which is great don't get me wrong love the template great template and i enjoyed the theological bent on it the one thing that I will say is when I played the Wretched with the 100 dice pool variant, it was very depressed. I felt every bit of my character's depression watching my dice pool dwindle down. I did not quite feel that on this one. And I don't know if it is the subject matter or if it is because I've played several of these games. I just... I felt more and more tired as I was going through it, which is a great feeling for the game. Like it is definitely a feeling that I think, and I think it's a feeling that the game wants you to feel is just tired. And where the wretched was, oh my God, I'm going to die. How do I survive? This game definitely feels more. I have been doing this for so long. I am tired and I want it all to end one way or the other. And I definitely felt that. If that was the intended feel, then great job. They definitely nailed it on that. Now, I did cheat a little bit at the end. I found the last king. I looked for the last king I put at the top of the deck. Because I've been playing this for an hour and a half. I don't know how long the episode's going to be. But, like, I've been playing for an hour and a half. That's a long time. <laughs> I'm, I'm tired. It's time for me to go to bed. But it was a fun game. I did want to get to an end game. And you guys should definitely go and check it out. Definitely go and check it out. It is currently $10 on itch. And you can find it at codyfalk.itch.io slash 2 rain in hell And of course, the link will be in the show notes. So go check it out. Give this game a good look-see. It is a fun game. It is an entertaining game. I almost wonder if this game would play well with other people and the reason why i wonder this is because i played the wretched with two of my players when one of my 
when one of my sessions was almost canceled and playing a horror game with multiple people doesn't work. I think this might work for, you know, one or two people again, since it's, it is definitely a game of feeling tired and run down and worn out. And I think that you can actually capture that feeling with multiple players. I wouldn't play with more than maybe two, but I think this is something that if you have a small group and you're looking for something to do, it might work, but it definitely works great solo. And I recommend doing it solo. Uh, again, link down below so that you can get your own copy. But I have been Steel Stash. This has been Lonely TTRPG. And remember, I must ask y'all to stay awesome. You've been listening to Lonely TTRPG, the solo TTRPG live play and review. If you've enjoyed this episode, please leave us a review. You can also reach us at Twitter at BDDC underscore pod or at Black Dragon Dungeon Company at gmail.com. If you really like us, you can consider supporting us on Patreon at patreon.com slash Black Dragon Dungeon Company. Thank you so much.